Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here, and welcome back to another installment of me saying that I did something embarrassing and then I had to delete it from my life so nobody else would see it. This time, what I did involves me and something that makes me angry, and that's all I'm going to say about it. With how many episodes Spongebob has, not every joke or every line of dialogue has made it into every episode that currently exists or will exist in the future. Today, we're diving back into deleted scenes from Spongebob episodes. I previously talked about all the episodes from Season 1 that we knew about with deleted scenes, so today, we're discussing episodes from Season 2 with deleted scenes. Like last time, I set up some rules on what does and doesn't count as a deleted scene, so let's review those rules again before we jump in. Number 1. What counts as a deleted scene? Everything that counts as a deleted scene for discussion today includes a single line or full scene that was written or storyboarded but was ultimately cut, an entirely different storyline that was changed before the release, or a single shot that was made but not used in the final version, and a scene that was included in the original airing. Number 2. What doesn't count as a deleted scene includes Typos in the opening or ending credits because that was just a simple mistake, not a deleted scene, or a minor difference in the storyboard compared to the final episode. Because things like that are so minor, they are not worthy of discussion in the first place. But I might bend one of the rules every now and then. Number 3. This is primarily counting what the wiki is including as a deleted scene. If there's something I missed, it's because it wasn't listed in the season 2 section of deleted scenes. That also means this is likely to change over time, as more lost media gets uncovered and leaked online every day. Hell, something probably got leaked online as soon as I said that sentence. Number 4. I'm also going to speculate as to where these scenes would have been, and what the episode would have been like if they weren't cut. I don't know the exact reasons as to why the scenes were removed. I don't work for Nickelodeon. Thank God. And lastly. I won't be counting deleted scenes from international dubs, only scenes removed from the American version, since Spongebob is primarily made in the US. And now with that out of the way, let's jump in and discuss the deleted scenes from Season 2 of Spongebob. Our first deleted scene of today comes from Episode 44, Something Smells. In this episode, Spongebob wants to make a sundae, but he's out of ice cream, so he makes a sundae using ketchup, onions, and peanuts, and throws in the whole ass peanut plant with them too. After he eats it, he gets rancid breath. When he talks to other citizens, they smell his breath, and they run away because it's so bad. Patrick has Spongebob convinced he's ugly, and he becomes sad. Patrick later eats the sundae, and thinks he became ugly too. They later realize they have bad breath from the sundae, and they weren't ugly, they just stink, and they were so happy about that. We stink, we stink, we stink. They tell Squidward they stink, and run off into the horizon together. As revealed in the audio commentary on the Season 2 DVD, the original story for this episode was, instead of using ketchup and onions, Swodog would go buy every gallon of ice cream in town without realizing that the flavor he was buying was onion flavor and gets bad breath from that. This was changed to just using stuff he had in his house. If I had to guess, maybe it was changed to keep the story more simplified and maybe something for time constraints. To me, it feels kind of like it was easier to just improvise and make a sundae with other substances instead of running out and buying every gallon of ice cream for the sundae. Not to mention, why does he need every gallon of ice cream in town, and why does Bikini Bottom only have one flavor of ice cream, let alone that flavor being onions? The audio commentary also revealed at the very end, after Spongebob and Patrick meet Squidward, he had a deleted line saying, Ugly and smelly, two for one. Probably a follow-up to this line from earlier. I'm ugly and I'm proud! Is that what he calls it? I'm guessing Squidward would have said this before the camera changes, or maybe after Spongebob and Patrick run into the horizon, it would cut back to him and then he would say it. My gut tells me that this was cut because the shot of Spongebob and Patrick running into the horizon was the best ending shot for this episode. Cutting back to Squidward to say that line would have been funny, but unneeded since everything already wrapped up. And if this would have been before the final shot, they probably cut the line so the scene flows better and doesn't take attention away from Spongebob and Patrick. Next up is episode 46, Big Pink Loser. In this episode, Patrick wants an award after seeing how many awards Spongebob has, so he starts working with Spongebob at the Krusty Krab. Spongebob says, 
Patrick, you do exactly what I do, and you'll have an award in no time. Patrick takes that literally and starts copying everything SpongeBob says, does, and wears. They go to work and say, I'm ready, over and over again. Some storyboards for this episode show a lady complaining to her fat and lazy husband that he should be more like SpongeBob and Patrick. This would have occurred during the I'm ready scene. I guess this was cut to not take the focus away from SpongeBob and Patrick, since this was the scene where SpongeBob starts to suspect Patrick is copying his every move. But this scene would have been funny in the final cut, but it makes sense as to why they removed it. Moving on to episode 48, Dying for Pie. It's Employee Brotherhood Day at the Krusty Krab, and Squidwardine gets Spongebob a gift. He buys a pie from some pirates, but it was a bomb. When Squidward and Mr. Krabs are convinced that Spongebob ate the pie, he was going to explode at sunset. Squidward feels bad and makes it up to Spongebob by giving him the best day ever. Spongebob and Squidward do everything on Spongebob's friendship list, starting with showing Squidward to everybody in town. Some storyboards show Spongebob showing Squidward to a lady working in an office. After they leave, she looks outside, and they're gone. I think this was likely cut for time, and since we already had three shots of Spongebob showing Squidward to other people. We also have a very quick scene later on, where Spongebob illegally operates on Squidward. The storyboard shows Spongebob plugging up Squidward's chest with a cork after the blood starts gushing. Same with that last one, my guess is that it was cut for time, despite it being a quick shot. That's all I can come up with for that. Moving on, our next scene is from episode 52, Grandma's Kisses, the first episode to feature Spongebob's grandma. After Spongebob is laughed at for being kissed by his grandma in public, Patrick helps him be more mature. They put on sideburns before going to see his grandma. On the Seascape Capers DVD, some storyboards reveal they were going to wear mustaches instead. I'm guessing this was changed because sideburns are a little more interesting and less cliche than mustaches. Bad, and they later used the mustaches in the Spongebob Squarepants movie in 2004, when Mindy gave them mustaches to make Spongebob and Patrick seem more manly. Another storyboard shows another scene at the very end with Spongebob and Patrick eating cookies in satisfaction. This probably would have been after Spongebob's grandma teaches Spongebob the moral of the story. You can be an adult and still get love from your grandma. I'm guessing this was cut for time, and it wasn't entirely necessary. The moral is learned, and the moment between Spongebob and his grandma makes the story feel conclusive and very sweet. Before it's ruined by these assholes, it would have been nice to see the episode end on something other than this shot, but it was probably unneeded, so this scene was probably cut for that reason. Next up, episode 54, Pre-Hibernation Week. In this episode, Sandy makes Spongebob do extreme sports with her in the week leading up to her hibernation. The activities drive Spongebob crazy, and he hides to avoid getting more injuries. The first deleted scene occurs at the beginning. When Sandy is raking leaves, they form the shape of Texas. According to the audio commentary, they were supposed to form a girl power symbol. This was changed because the Texas symbol suited Sandy's character more. At that point, there was also going to be a quick little scene of Sandy doing a little jig after she rakes the leaves. That was probably cut for time since it was just very short and simple. The next scene occurs at the end. When Sandy finally hibernates, Spongebob is relieved. I never thought I'd say it, but thank Neptune for hibernation! Originally, he was supposed to be annoyed and say, Why I oughta? A weird line of dialogue in this case. I'm guessing he was going to be annoyed because Sandy fell asleep while he was talking. But this line change makes sense. Spongebob was hiding because he didn't want to keep getting hurt from everything Sandy was making him do. It makes sense why they changed it to being relieved. What, he's annoyed and now he doesn't have to do those life-threatening sports? Who are you? Next up is the very next episode. Episode 55, Life of Crime. In this one, Spongebob and Patrick have no money for a balloon, but they decide to borrow it so they can bring it back later. Not aware that it was Free Balloon Day. It's National Free Balloon Day! Spongebob and Patrick are talking about all the exciting things they can do with the balloon, and then it pops. It popped. The storyboards show that they were going to actually be doing some activities with the balloon instead of just standing in place and being excited. This probably would have been some kind of musical montage of Spongebob and Patrick having fun, and then when that's over, the balloon pops. 
This was changed because writer and storyboarder for this episode, Jay Lender, thought Spongebob and Patrick discussing the possibilities followed by the pop would have been funnier. And, well, he wasn't wrong. <laughs> Next up is episode 56, Christmas Who, the first Christmas episode of the series. When Spongebob finds out about Christmas, he tells everybody in town, and they get excited. Except for Squidward, who doesn't believe in Santa. When Santa doesn't come, he laughs at Spongebob, but then feels guilty and dresses up as Santa to cheer Spongebob up. There were three lines that were cut from this episode. First up, Squidward gives the first little girl a wrench as a present. Originally, he gave the little girl a plant that looks like himself instead. Right after this, Spongebob says to the little girl, I told you he was real, very enthusiastically. Then the crowd arrives asking for presents, and Mr. Krabs would have appeared and said, And don't forget my pony! Referencing his request to Spongebob earlier in this episode. What did you wish for? A pony. Really? With saddlebags full of money! I'm guessing all these were cut for time, since they didn't really add anything to the story or the episode itself. But why they changed the plant to a wrench is beyond me. Additionally, we have something else that was cut that wasn't listed here. Some of the earlier double length episodes have Patchy the Pirate talking to the audience, since there wasn't enough material to make the episode a full 22 minutes. When it breaks for commercial and comes back, Patchy says it's about time the viewers came back so he could finish the story. This line was cut from all home media releases, as there are no commercial breaks on VHS or DVD. Moving on to episode 57, Survival of the Idiots. In this episode, Spongebob and Patrick visit Sandy while she's hibernating, despite her warnings. Spongebob and Patrick see Sandy in bed, and she's gained a lot of weight and her fur is a lot thicker as a result of her being asleep for so long at this point. As we can see, she's sleeping in a normal bed. The audio commentary reveals that Sandy's bed was originally going to be hanging from the ceiling and there would have been much more saliva. Now when I first heard about this alternate version a long time ago, I wonder how that would have worked. Would the bed literally be upside down and dangling from the ceiling? I don't know how that would have made sense, but it would have explained the much more saliva part. Now the wiki says that the bed would have been something like a hammock, so now it makes more sense. My guess is that it was changed probably to keep things simple and they didn't need to do anything crazy with Sandy's bed since it's not that big a deal and Spongebob and Patrick still need to tease her in her sleep. See you later, Sheriff Sandy! So they probably just kept it normal for simplicity's sake. Next up is episode 62, Squirrel Jokes. Mr. Krabs puts on a comedy show and Spongebob performs. The crowd doesn't like his routine, so he starts making jokes about Sandy, starting with her teeth. Did you ever notice how big Squirrel's teeth are? As we can see, the shot of her teeth has an animated highlight effect. This image shows that it was originally supposed to be just a close-up still image instead of an animated one. Looking at them side by side, the only real difference is the color of the images and the highlighter effect. But in my opinion, the animated shot with the highlight effect looks better, so I'm okay with this change. Moving on to the next episode, episode 63, Pressure. And the deleted scene here is weird. In this one, Spongebob and Sandy start to compete as to whether land creatures or sea creatures are better. Patrick Squidward and Mr. Krabs join this argument too. The sea creatures start doing things Sandy can't do. Can you reproduce by budding? Can you? Can you? No. Writer and storyboard director Jay Lenders shared these storyboard images of Spongebob sticking out his tongue and putting it through his pores. This was probably changed in favor of the reproducing by budding scene. However, Jay Lender also notes that this may be from episode 80, Sandy, Spongebob, and the Worm. I have no idea where this would have been. Maybe it would have been when Spongebob was telling everybody about the Alaskan bullworm, or maybe it was one of his various attempts to stop Sandy from going after the worm? I don't know. In the storyboards, Spongebob is in the same angle as he is in Worm, where he tells everybody about what he saw, so maybe it is from here. If it was from this episode, then it was probably cut for time. 
However, in the storyboards, SpongeBob is wearing his Krusty Krab uniform, and he is not wearing it in either of the episodes, so really it's anybody's guess. And now it's time for one of the most unique episodes in SpongeBob history, episode 65, Shanghai. In this one, SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward climb onto the Flying Dutchman's ship via his anchor rope, and they're forced to be a part of his crew. After some shenanigans, he gives the group three wishes, and they all argue over who gets the last wish. This episode originally allowed the viewers to vote for which ending the episode would get, who would get the last wish, and what they wished for. SpongeBob's wish was that the Dutchman was a vegetarian, but they ended up turned into fruits in the Dutchman's blender. Patrick and Squidward's endings were made for the episode, only played in the original airing to show what they were, and then removed forever. In Patrick's ending, he wished for gum so that they'd have fresh breath, and the three ended up eaten by the Dutchman. In Squidward's ending, he wished he'd never met Spongebob and Patrick before, and the Dutchman made it so that that was the first time they met, and then the Dutchman ate them. Spongebob's ending was the only ending that didn't end with an obese flying Dutchman. The Patchy the Pirate segments in the original airing show some scenes with him at a desk with phones explaining to the viewers how to vote on the ending, and there's a final scene where Potty the Parrot tries to quit and Patchy tries to stop him. These were cuts since they talk about how the episode would end in future reruns, and in the future, the episode ends after Potty explodes. The original airing opens up with You Wish, which was how this episode was originally marketed, and this pirate battle all cut from reruns, and the Patchy segments are now referred to as Patchy's Pick. Some scenes were edited to remove any dialogue from the original ending referring to choosing the ending, and some things were recontextualized. Or the internet, if you're technologically inclined. We're gonna see me favorite show, Shanghai, ta-da! And now the most requested ending. Great. Well, that's it for Patchy's Pick. Hooray! However, the original airing is mostly intact on the first 100 episodes DVD from 2009, with the only change being the original number to call has retired and moved to Davy Jones' locker. And why they chose the underwater version of Hell is beyond me. Definitely one of the most unique SpongeBob events ever, and I wish I could have been there to see the original airing, even if I couldn't save the number from Davy Jones' locker, damn it. Moving on, the next episode with a deleted scene is episode 67, Welcome to the Chum Bucket. In this one, Mr. Krabs loses a bet with Plankton and Spongebob has to work at the Chum Bucket. Plankton commands Spongebob to make him a Krabby Patty and then threatens to put his brain in a robot version of Spongebob. After many attempts to make Spongebob happy, he still refuses to work, so Plankton puts Spongebob's brain in the robot. The final episode plays out like this. You just lost your brain privileges! A deleted scene was made of Plankton taking Swindon's brain out and putting it in the robot. It was probably cut either for time or for being too graphic. But if you think about it, it's weird that they don't show Spongebob even try to put up a fight or get a glimpse on how Plankton would have restrained Spongebob to take his brain out. Something like that would have been nice, but it was probably cut for time which was clearly the best call in this case. Now for everybody's favorite episode. Episode 70, Band Geeks. In this episode, Squidward tries to put a band together for the Bubble Bowl after being taunted by his arch rival, Squilliam Fancy Son. After many failed attempts by everybody else, Squidward gives up, so SpongeBob makes everybody pull together and the performance is amazing. In the episode, the song is David Glenn Isley's Sweet Victory. Originally, the writers thought of playing marching band music during the performance, but changed their mind because it wasn't as humorous or unique as an 80s power ballad. And without that decision, I don't think Spongebob would be remembered as it is today. Now I know what you're saying. Mikey, all these deleted scenes are pretty cool, but I want to see you rant about Nosferatu again. My response to that is, is that really what you want to see? Well, that's where this next deleted scene comes into play. Episode 71, Graveyard Shift, has two deleted scenes to talk about, like several of the previous episodes I mentioned. In this one, Mr. Krabs opens to Krusty Krab 24 hours a day, and SpongeBob and Squidward have to work overnight. SpongeBob starts doing various things. At night, 
The storyboards show that one of those is delivering mail to Floorboard Harry, who is depicted as somebody who lives underneath the Krusty Krab floorboards, hiding behind some floorboards with an eye visible through a hole. I wonder if those are the same floorboards that Mr. Krabs hid the boots under in episode 17, Squeaky Boots from season 1. Originally, he was supposed to be the character flickering the lights instead of Nosferatu. Nosferatu! Since Nosferatu appeared in the final version, they probably cut floorboard Harry since he would have been set up here for no reason, and he's never shown again after that. There's also no setup to Nosferatu in this episode either, so Floorboard Harry would have been a better setup and payoff in this instance. And if they kept Floorboard Harry, we probably wouldn't see Nosferatu shoehorn into so many episodes in season 13 onwards, let alone the invention of this abomination of a character, Slappy. There you go. There's my rant. Also, after Swimmer tells Spongebob that his story about the hash-leading slasher was a joke, some Bikini Bottomites are shown with random things over their hands, but none of them were spatulas. And the twist revealed here was basically the same twist with this guy and his spatula at the end of the episode. Jay Lender said that this was removed for disrupting the tone and atmosphere of this scene. And I honestly agree. It was revealed that it was a joke and then Spongebob laughs, having all these characters reveal that they have things other than spatulas for hands is kinda pointless for this scene. Not to mention none of them are spatulas. I do get the joke they implied with that, but yeah, it was definitely a pointless joke and I understand why it was cut. Let's move on to one of the most notorious deleted scenes in Spongebob history. The one from episode 73, Procrastination. In this one, Mrs. Puff assigns an 800 word essay on what not to do at a stoplight, and it was due the next day. Hi, two! Drop and give me 4,000 right now! Spongebob struggles to write it at first, and then the episode cuts like this. This is harder than I thought. I can feel those juices pumping now. Spongebob looks outside and sees everybody having fun, but he continues to work so he can get his driver's license, which shows a live action car crash, and then when he tries to write, his head falls down, and then he tries to do some calisthenics to get the blood flowing. This episode aired as normal until 2005, but after that point, that entire minute of story was cut. Without Spongebob's head falling, we do miss the very subtle hint that everything happening around him at this point was just a dream until he wakes up. The whole minute was gone for many reasons. Patrick rubbing suntan lotion on Sandy, who's without her suit, was removed because it could look like Patrick was trying to take off Sandy's underwear. The car crash was cut for being violent. And the calisthenics part was cut due to the motions of his nose. I said this in the past, but this whole scene could have been kept in just with some things changed. They could keep the outdoor shots, but chop out the shot with Patrick and Sandy. Replace the live action car crash with stock footage from a previous episode of Spongebob failing, or create an entirely new sequence. And if they were absolutely terrified of how Spongebob's nose looks here, just keep the calisthenics scene, but only keep Spongebob's whole body and eyelashes doing the motions. What is wrong with you Nickelodeon? That way, we still get the important story detail of Spongebob falling asleep, and the episode doesn't look desaturated when it airs on TV. Now thankfully, the episode with the deleted scenes is on the DVD release, but I still won't forgive Nickelodeon for removing Spongebob doing calisthenics. Okay, now that I got that out of my system, let's move on to episode 75, Sailor Mouth. In this episode, Spongebob and Patrick start saying a bad word they saw in the dumpster. Once they find out it's a bad word, they promise Mr. Krabs they'll stop saying it. Later, they play eels and escalators, but Spongebob keeps doing poorly and slips out bad word number 11. You said number 11. Originally, Swindoll was supposed to say, Go yourself to Patrick, and Patrick would reply with, You too. It's pretty obvious why that was cut. It's too apparent what they were saying here. 
Next up, episode 76, Artist Unknown. Squidward starts an art class at the rec center, and an art collector named Monty P. Moneybags comes to buy art for his new museum. Squidward offers bold and brash. More like belongs in the trash! <laughs> the storyboards show that bold and brash was supposed to look like a fish rather than an octopus. But this design was changed to the one we all know and love. Just think where I would be if this was the final design. Our next episode is episode 77, Jellyfish Hunter. In this one, Spongebob puts jellyfish jelly on a Krabby Patty, the other customers try it, and it becomes so popular that Mr. Kratz makes Spongebob catch all the jellyfish in jellyfish fields. And we see this. The famous more crabs. During this scene, there were supposed to be two more grotesque designs of Mr. Krabs, as these storyboards show. I am so glad they didn't appear in the final cut, because these are legitimately nightmare fuel. No joke. <gasps> also, the Fisher Price Interact TV version of this episode cut out the parts where SpongeBob said bye to 12E and the part where No Name slash Friend breathes into SpongeBob's phone. And I could not tell you why. And our final episode today is episode 78 The Fry Cook Games. The episode where they parody the Olympics with various food and fry cooks taking the place of athletes. For some unknown reason, the title card of this episode is cut from some airings of this episode, specifically on Nick at Night as of 2018. Something similar occurs with episode 15, Jellyfish Jam from season 1, and in both of these instances, the episode that airs is a non-remastered version that cut out the title card for some reason. But this isn't a problem on home media or Nicktoons USA as of 2019, which does use a remastered version with the title card intact. And that remastered print features a different sound effect instead of the long beep that would play here in this shot. And I could not tell you why this is the case either. And that is every deleted scene from Spongebob Season 2. While there were a few more than I anticipated, it was still so fascinating going through and learning about all these, from the original plot point for Something Smells, to the nightmare fuel for Jellyfish Hunter. And as for what I did that I wanted to delete from my life, I got a game over in a video game and threw my Nintendo Switch on the ground in anger. <laughs>